Max Payne is nothing without the classic rugged noir monologues. They ain't gonna make this easy for us, are they? But this time, Rockstar had a new challenge for the man behind Max. Part of Max is the voice, James McCaffrey, and he's back for Max Payne 3. Right? Yeah, no, he's absolutely back, and he, um, we actually modeled his face. We looked at James and thought, he yeah, actually has a good look for Max Payne, because we're not just capturing the actor's motion when we're doing the cutscene, we're capturing their facial animation and their audio. You stay in your office, lock yourself in. It is great to have you back as Max. Pleasure to be here. So James, for this game, you didn't just do voiceover like the first two games. You actually you know, performed the role on a sound stage. Those performance capture sections were uh, directed by Rod Edge from Rockstar. What, what was that like? When I first started doing the voice, I just thought it was a great character and it had great dialogue. This has great character, great dialogue, great story, great locations. I'd arrived in Sao Paulo a few weeks before. Working with Rod gave me the confidence to just be his max. He would sometimes act out the scene. Yeah. If it was jumping off a balcony or, or uh, you know, 30 feet onto a mat. 30 feet off a mat? You were doing that kind of well, stuff? I wouldn't do it until Rod did it, and, and <laughs> I'm telling you, he did it. So you were doing stunt work on this game? I was doing some, some of the stunt work. There was a whole team of stunt guys doing the, the right. harder stuff. You didn't have to shave your head, though, like Max does in the game, right? I uh, almost did. I mean, they had the razor there and everything. So that scene where he's actually shaving his head, that, that was actually you, like, on a sound stage? In front of a there? sink with a razor. Did you do the shoot dodge? Because you always see Max, like, jumping. I had to do a few of those jumps. With this is like an guys. action movie for you, It was right? an action movie. I had to do some crazy stuff. What excites you guys about doing a shooter like this? The shooting genre is really competitive. What did you want to do here with Max Payne? We wanted to give the player the ability to pretty much do anything they want to do in the environment while getting into these gunfights. Tie into this sort of original inspiration for the Max games, which is the, the you know the Hong Kong action stuff where guns are everywhere and you pick them up and you use them yeah. until you need them and maybe instead of reloading a clip you throw it away and you grab another one. We had to really take a look at how we handle bullet time. Bullet time is a central mechanic, central focus in the development, and it's a lot more than just sort of slowing down time. Everything has to hold up in slow motion, whether it's how he fires the gun, gun mechanisms, his coat flapping in the wind, every little detail needed to be addressed. And dual wield, of course, which is a big part of Max Payne, right? Yeah, dual wield is back. His magic pockets are gone. And so if you want a dual wield, you can't carry the rifle. So if you're running along with a rifle, uh, you could have two handguns in your in your holsters. If you want to pull them both out, he'll chuck the rifle away and pull the uh, pull the handguns out. We even have something called last man standing, which means that if you still have painkillers in your inventory and you're shot and killed, we give you the opportunity to shoot the person that shot you to come back to life. Instant vengeance. Instant vengeance. And if you can kill him, you live to fight on a little bit longer. You get some great action sequences in that nightclub level where it's like, you, you know, you crash through, you go through the club, then you're on the rooftop, and you get in the helicopter. The enemies are coming in, you're moving. Hanging off the uh, bottom of the helicopter. That's the, the ultimate action moment everyone wants, right? There's also a great sense of movement to this game. One of the challenges with any action game, especially in the third person, is like creating the animation so you feel like there's action happening, but you're always in control. We needed to have pixel-perfect controls in order to make the shooting exciting. We wanted the player to have that control that you usually find in first-person shooters. You can shoot dodge any direction from whatever way you're running and you're facing, his feet will line up. And uh, if you keep pegging the stick, he'll get up and scramble on in the direction that you were going while you're still able to shoot so that you never feel like you're out of control. If things are so heavy that you don't want to get up, you, you can just stay there on the ground and you can swing around 360 degrees and take out your foes from there. Now you have cover in the game that Max yeah. can use. You've got, you know, melee. You've got, you, I mean, you really have to plot out your strategy. We really wanted this to be a game that lots of different people can play. We wanted to have the player have as much control as possible. So I might shoot dodge out of cover. I might vault over the cover. You know, I might sneak around the cover. So it's just an amazing amount of control for players. Max has some friends that are dying to see him. Well, more likely they'll be dying when they do see him. We'll meet them next as we continue our journey through this exclusive chapter. This is GTTV Presents Max Payne 3.